Hey everybody, I am back with another video. I've had a lot of requests on actually doing some app building and programming. What you're going to need for this video is Xcode, and you can get Xcode 4 from the Mac App Store. And some people asked if they could use Xcode 3. Yeah, you can use Xcode 3. It works the same way. None of the code changes. But I would suggest if you're going to learn Xcode, just learn Xcode 4. It's easier to use once you get around to it. It's a simpler interface. And you can't build iOS 5 apps on Xcode 3 anymore. The farthest you can go is 4.3. Just go with Xcode 4. If you're wondering where you can get Xcode, it is now a free download on the Mac App Store. And just download it and follow the instructions to set it up. And that's all you're going to need to know. And so the app I'm going to show you how to build here is really simple, like really, really simple. I'll show you how to build the app, use Interface Builder, and how to run in the iPhone app simulator. And I won't go through debugging, but if this video um, proves helpful, I can do that. I've built a few apps in my day. I actually have one waiting for approval in the App Store right now, but uh, aside from the point. So this is what the app's going to do. It's really simple. This is the iPhone simulator, by the way. It's just called First App. It has no icon or anything, because you don't need to if you're just going to build it and toy around. So this is what it does. It's really simple. It just says, hello world. And then it's got a text field. And you can enter stuff in the text field. Say, what's up, Xcode. And you hit the submit button. And it just puts it on the screen. So it doesn't do anything useful. You can't actually like put it in the app store or anything. But it's a good way to get a feel for using interface, builder, um, you know, learning your first few lines of code, learning the implementation files and the headers and such like that. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so the first thing you're going to want to do is open Xcode. So if you go to Launchpad, there will be a folder called Developer, and you just click Developer Xcode. And this is what you'll see. And you won't have anything in this little box where it says Recents because you won't have built anything. So just uh, ignore that. But it'll say, Welcome to Xcode. It'll tell you your version. It'll give you all these options. The only thing you need to know right now is create a new Xcode project. So make a new Xcode project, and you'll see this screen. And so for what we're doing, just an iOS application, single view application, is plenty. So do single view application and just name it. I'm going to name it my first app. And it really isn't my first app, but we'll just pretend it is. Hit next. And then it asks you where you want to save it. I made a little folder for my projects, but save it wherever the heck you want. I don't know. I don't care. And you'll see this screen. So it might look overwhelming at first, but you just have to take everything in stride. So this is Xcode and I'm gonna make it full screen. This is the iPhone and Mac app basically factory you could call it and you'll see all kinds of things. There's a menu, there is a run, stop, info bar, breakpoints, all these editors and views and so basically I just encourage you to open it and kinda of just play around with it. You won't break it. It's not gonna crash or not turn back on if you mess up something so don't worry about it but just open it and kinda of play around with it if you look on the left you'll see this all these folders it's got my first app my first pass my my first app tests frameworks products so the only one that you're gonna be working with right now is my first app and so if you open that up you see a bunch of different apps here you see app delegate app delegate m viewcontroller.h viewcontroller.m and viewcontroller.xib. The H files are basically header files. They just talk about things that need to be disclosed, details. Um, you could call it like a requirement list or a checklist for your app. And so app delegate H and M, you don't really need. You don't, well, you need them, but you don't need to touch them. So these are basically automatically updated for you, so don't ever touch them. Unless you really know what you're doing, just don't mess with them. 
Now, viewcontroller.h and m are the ones you mess with. So, viewcontroller.h basically discloses everything that your application needs to run. And so you'll declare variables, actions, outputs, and so forth. Moving on, we got viewcontroller.m. This is your implementation file. These, this is the file where you, I said these because you can have more than one of them. If you have more than one view, just ignore that. This file is the file that basically you tell your app what you want it to do. So right now, you probably just see a bunch of mumbo jumbo, but I'll help you get some code in there. And I'll include a copy of this app that you can download in case it's not working so you can look at the code. So anyways, and this very last one is actually a really special one, viewcontroller.xib. This is basically a really visual way of building an application. So this is actually what you'd see if you launched the application right now. I'm not going to because it doesn't do anything. But all you do is if you see this view on the right, and if this isn't up, it's because this button isn't pressed. So press this button right here, and it'll pull up your inspector. And so down here, there's a bunch of tabs. You have file templates, code snippets, and then this last one is object view, and that's the one you're going to want. So choose that, and then all you do to get something onto the screen of your application is you just drag it. So for this application, we're going to want a label. So we drag the label, and it tells you when it's centered and when it's near the top, and that's all you do. And up here on the right, you can change the text. So we're, we could say, hello, world. And play through here. I encourage you to just play around with it. But you can change all this stuff. You can change the um, font size. You can change the color. You can change basically anything. And see, it lets you get it centered again. And so, yeah, we can turn up the font size, you know, play with that, but I'm not going to spend too much time doing that. So, next thing that we need is a text field for us to input our text of what we want the app to say. So, text field displays rounded rectangle, blah, 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 blah. So, bring that just somewhere in there, doesn't really matter. And the placeholder text, you don't want text because that will automatically input it, but you can put placeholder text. Um, enter some text. I don't know. How about that? And then resize it to your liking. Like Basically all the size and visual tweaks you can just get a feel for by playing around with it. I mean it's not too hard. So next we're going to need a button. So a round rect button. Bring that in here. And title submit. <laughs> I was going to try to do something fun but we'll just go with something boring. And so bring these down a little bit. And the very last thing we need is a label. Now this one is going to be hidden, so we'll just go label, make it kind of bigger, it doesn't really matter, the size, change stuff around, so center alignment, um, word wrap, all that, you know, play with it yourself, but, and then you're going to delete the text off of this, so it says nothing. So it's empty, you can't tell it's there. And this is basically the framework of your app. If you launch this on the simulator, it would run. It would work just fine. What we are going to do is make the connections to the code. And so this part can seem kind of tricky, but I encourage you to just go online, download examples. Apple has great developer resources. Um, so what we're going to do here to connect this to our code, and bring this over, you click in the editor area, you click this one that looks like a little bow tie. And... I'm going to hide this toolbar because I don't need it. But you'll see here it gives you two windows. And this is really useful because you don't even need to define without remembering what you named your stuff. You can do it all by yourself. So what I'm going to do is in make sure this is on viewcontroller.h. Perfect. Now we're going to connect our things. So this part's a little tricky, but just follow me. We're going to add a squiggly bracket, hit enter, and then we're going to start hitting the control button while dragging to create our actions. So if you hold control and drag into here, it'll make this and it says insert outlet or connection and it pops up. So I'm going to name this user input because you're inputting it. It needs to be an outlet connection, object files owner, type UI label, storage. It'll have weak highlighted but you want strong. That just means the app cannot quit doing this until you tell it to. And hit connect. 
And if you look there, boom, there it is. So hit enter, do the same thing with this label. Control drag in there. And we're going to name this user out, ooh, output. Same settings and everything. So boom. And I'm really picky about my code placement, but that's just me. So if you look, those two are in there. Now we need to add one more thing. This one's a little different. It's not going to be inside the brackets of the view controller because it's not handled by that. We're going to do the submit button. We're going to drag it. And we're going to do an action. And the action basically tells the app to do something. It's not an outlet for data. It's telling it what to do. So the name, we'll name it set output. And connection action file owner type ID event touch up inside argument sender. If you want to know what all those mean, you can find plenty of information on the internet. And so lastly, we're going to need to set up our properties. And so these just tell the app what is going on. So type app property parentheses and we're going to want to use the same settings that we used inside the labels. So one We'll do strong, strong, non-atomic, and then UI label, and then same thing, asterisk user input, semicolon, and then do the same exact thing, property, strong, UI text field text field and star user wait did I fruit that up? darn it alright well this one is user input this is the thing that gets you when you're coding is you have to keep your variables really well organized so this one is actually user output and so boom that part's done now if you'll see these little triangles it'll say property user output requires method we're going to do that next so don't worry about that so now, save this file, control S, and then hop over to viewcontroller.m. And when this one looks a little bit more intimidating, don't be intimidated. We'll keep on keeping on. So, first thing we're going to do, at synthesize. And synthesize basically tells the app, these are the variables we're using. So without synthesizing them, you don't actually have them. You can think of synthesize as make. So, synthesize property, user input semicolon, synthesize, same thing, user output, semicolon, boom, that's all I need to do. And then the very last part to make this app functional, if you'll see the yellow triangles go away because it knows we defined them, the very last part to making this work is right here. It is down at the bottom, it automatically ends it. And this is from the action we created earlier with the button. So it says IB action set output ID sender. Now you add some text. So all you do, and you can, if you understand the syntax of this, good for you. If not, just write exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> Here we go. You go user output dot text equals user input dot text semicolon boom you're done so this made our app fully functional now if you're wondering what this is doing I can give you a quick little explanation this is saying that the text that is based inside your user input which is the text field is going to be equal to the text that is inside your user output which is your label and that the IB action set output is the button so when you click the button it's saying Oh, do this. And that's it. That's all we need for our app. So if we save all the corresponding files, and then up here, you're just going to want to click the Run button. So there's a bunch of different options. 5.0 Simulator iOS device. The only one I suggest you use is iPhone Simulator. You can't even use a device unless you are a registered developer and you have provisioning profiles set up. So we'll run this. And if all went well, it should work. So if you see no issues, good. The iPhone simulator is going to pop up, and here it is. Hello, world. And let's enter some text. There you go. So, boom. Typed in test, and 
worked. It's working perfectly.